Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of The County Seat. I'm your host, Chad Booth. I have a question for you. When you play the game of Monopoly, you go past that go directly to jail box. But they don't give you any information on what happens to you when you get to jail, like what's paid for and what's not. Health insurance is one of those topics. Do you know what happens to your health insurance when you are booked into jail? Well, Malia Bascom does, and that's the topic of this week's county seat. Once the door closes and you find yourself an inmate at a county jail, many of your freedoms are left on the other side of the cell door. That's the point of going to jail, after all. But there is something else that gets left behind as well that's a bit more unexpected, your health insurance coverage. When a person walks through our doors, and if they could have the world's best insurance as they came into our facility and it's gone. Now every injury they have is picked up by our taxpayers. Uh, we have almost a million three hundred thousand dollar pharmacy budget alone and about 60 70 percent of that is in psychotropics which is for mental, the mentally ill. We're the largest mental health facility in the state. Sheriff Winder is absolutely right. The, the expenses for the, for the county facilities is outrageous. You know eighty to ninety thousand dollars a month is very understandable because mine in a much lesser sized jail you know we're eighteen to twenty thousand dollars a month just pharmaceutical the problem we've got in the county jail setting is the state law that is passed that gives the insurance companies the right not to cover inmates in jail was passed with a prison setting in mind a person goes to prison for two and three and four years okay i can understand where an insurance company wouldn't want to cover a person for that extended period of time a person goes to a county jail on average 60 days. So to not cover that individual for those 60 days makes absolutely no sense whatsoever in the world. That's what we're trying to do is to get the county jails eliminated from that process so that if a person goes in and they have health insurance, that that health insurance covers that individual for that amount of time when they're in the county jail. To accomplish this goal, House Bill 11 was introduced to exclude county jails from the current law. In essence, replacing whatever insurance the short-term prisoner already has in place and is paying for, as opposed to the taxpayers paying for it. While sheriffs and county officials like the idea, insurance companies see it very differently. What you're asking is you're saying that when society decides an individual needs to be incarcerated, then the responsibility for maintaining that person's health care is disproportionate upon insurance companies to guarantee that they're going to provide the same level of coverage that they provided when the person wasn't incarcerated. There's only one small problem. We exempt incarceration. So what that means is that a small business would have to increase their cost in order to do that. County residents have to pay for these individuals to, to cover their insurance needs, their, their health insurance needs when in fact the person is actually still paying the premiums, he comes to jail for 60 days, he's probably still paying the premiums, but yet he's not covering that amount of time. So it makes no sense in a county jail setting. Whether or not insurance companies will eventually have to cover the risk of short-term incarceration in health plans for their insured, or taxpayers will continue to foot the bill, is likely to remain an issue as governments across the country try to close their increasing budget gaps. What he's doing is he's attempting to deviate from a public policy that's been well established in the United States of America, and that's that every citizen has an interest in public safety, and therefore every citizen has an equal responsibility of bearing the cost of incarceration. There's just a totally different setting from a jail setting and a prison setting. Big difference in time inside the facility, big difference there should be in coverage. We shouldn't eliminate the insurance's responsibility for a person that's in the county jail. For the county seat, I'm Malia Bascom. Thank you for that report, Malia. We will be back with more of the county seat. We will be discussing inmate insurance and a potential bill that is headed to the legislature uh, this session and what the rights and responsibilities and the social consequences of inmate insurance and incarceration really are all about. We'll be right back with the county seat in just a minute. Fall in love with fall, Logan, Utah. 
State of Utah School and Institutional Trust Lands Administration. CITLA manages 3.5 million acres of Utah lands with the express purpose of furthering the education of Utah students while promoting local industry, oil and gas, even residential development, all at the same time. Through the careful use of trust lands, we distributed more than $22 million to Utah schools last year. The State of Utah School and Institutional Trust Lands Administration, building the state's permanent school fund. So, what brings you to town? What brings anyone to St. George? A couple rounds of golf, a little relaxation. What is that all? Is there more? What do you picture when you hear Rich County, Utah? Bear Lake Adventure? Snowmobile action? Pristine skiing? Spectacular solitude? Well, if that isn't what first came to mind, then you just don't know Rich County. The Bear Lake Monster Polar Plunge. Snowmobiling Monte Cristo. Ice fishing Bear Lake. Skiing the backcountry. Fishing at the Cisco Disco. Come and find out what you never knew you were missing. Rich County, Utah.